Hey all my fellow adventurers, Seven Adventure here, and today we are continuing with the Clay Civilizations project. This is, what's, well it's season two, obviously, but it's episode five, four, I don't know, it, it doesn't matter, it's in the title description, it's in the title description, it's in the title, you know what episode it is, I don't, so, here we are with Yellow, the Equalists, you notice they have a bucket of water here, very impressive, they have, uh, what else they got? They got a diamond pickaxe. They've been doing a lot of work underground, which I'm going to show you in a second. But first, I want to show you the things that have been going on above ground. They have a diamond. They have uh, they have redstone. They have, they have a bunch of stuff. They've actually been doing quite well for themselves. They also have this defense tower, which is actually going to go in a different place, because the reason they have this isn't actually to expand their border this way for the surface, but to expand it this way for uh, accessing lava underground, which you'll see what I'm talking about in a second. Speaking of, in a second, there isn't really much else to show up here aside from they have a lot of stone. But, um, so let's just go down there. You'll see what I'm talking about. So you see, we go down here, as we normally do. We jump down into this hole. You know, you've seen this before. So you remember, we go down the waterfall here, waterfall river, I don't know, whatever you want to call it. And uh, last time we hadn't seen the bottom of this, but now we have. So you see that what they have been digging to actually been uh, this uh, extension of the cave system and which way is it exactly there's access to some lapis lazuli down there there's access to ravines all kinds of stuff and um, if I remember correctly it's this way so there's some lava here but if you look on the map um, this is definitely outside their their radius of influence uh, so they were trying to find some lava that was closer to you know, to be able to expand towards. I'm not sure if I'm making any sense. Here, this is the lava that they that they want to obtain. If we look on the map here, this is the uh, extension. Uh, this is that defense tower that I had showed you. So if you if we actually take a look through the ground here, you can see that the that the lava extends quite a ways. So I think that what they're going to do is dig. Th whoops. I think what they're going to do is dig through this side. And then pour the water, you know, like right around, right around here. And then that'll make obsidian. And then they'll probably in the next episode be able to make the first nether portal. And they will be kind of a big threat to everyone around them. Or everyone not around them. It's kind of a kind of a scary circumstance for all the other civilizations. But anyway, that's what yellow's been up to. They've just been going hard at mining, just trying to find the quickest way to make those portals, the quickest way to end it all for everyone else. Moving on, here we are with the light blue glass civilization. They're going to have a battle today, and that's going to be very fun. But first, let's talk about what their civilization has been up to. Mainly, you can see that uh, th that down here they have these things, which are fire charges. They look really cool when they're placed down. I really like that. Uh, I think it's the placeable items mod that allows you to place. This is clay, this is fire charge, these are sticks, that's coal, uh, pork chops, which I just realized you can actually eat them. You hear that? You can actually eat them right off of the things that you place them on. It's pretty cool. Um, but the point is, they actually have access to fire charge now, so imagine that. Um, they're going to be fire wielding. Uh, that's going to be very fun. The fire charges are actually, I feel like, kind of kind of underrated in a lot of ways. Not only are they a ranged projectile, but when the when people when other clay soldiers die from fire, their clay, I actually give them clay and and gas tears. So the gas tears allows them to revive brick dolls, dolls that have died by fire, to their own color. So that means if light blue glass mages uh, kill some enemies with fire charges with fire those enemies will turn into brick dolls and they can revive them to their own side the light blue can and then of course if their own units die they can also revive those now um, I don't know if we really have any upgrades here but uh, oh yeah and um, I'm the recipe for fire charge that I've come up with is just been gravel with lava so they have to have access to lava source block and um, and yeah, that's down here, which is what they were digging to in the last episode. Uh, so, just want to show you that real quick. It's a long ways down. They have uh, they've spent a long time getting to this point, but they have access to this lava. They have access to this gravel. Perfect. They're also going to be digging straight down here. Um, what are they going for? I think they're going for 
diamonds or, or something along those lines. Not entirely sure. It's been a few days since, since I've updated this, but you can see that they have a large extension of, uh, of cave systems, which is pretty exciting. You can see it even goes further that way. But uh, yeah, let's have a battle though, because if you don't recall, in the last episode, also which... Oh, the Falcord, that's where we're going. So the Falcord are under attack by the light blue ma by the light blue glass mages. So here we are at the Falcord base, and you can see... Oh, I have to get this set up. Well, let me get this set up and I'll be right back. Oh yes, and before I forget, I need to tell you guys what these two defenders have as far as... Um, as, as far as all the things that they have. Because the Falcord... You know, they're not that impressive as far as, you know, the amount of population they have. They only got 10 units there at their base. They're not very impressive as far as their um, unit numbers when they go to raid a nearby village. But what they are really impressive in is militia, and more specifically how powerful their units are. So they're going to have two pretty damn powerful units, and then they're going to have eight just regular soldiers with nothing. Uh, the two soldiers that have really good stuff, one of them is going to have a glistening melon to heal units, an iron ingot, um, an upgraded uh, shield, gunpowder so they'll explode when they die, an upgraded chest plate, play, and nether brick. And the other unit is going to have a blaze rod, a shear, uh, a wooden button, uh, an iron ingot, redstone, nether brick, a chest plate, gunpowder, and clay as well. So this, these two units are are buff to say the least. They're going to be able to heal allies. They have they have amazing defense. They have really good offense. Uh, I mean, they have a healer. One of them's one of them's really good in offense. One of them's the healer. They're just they're just all around good. One of the best things that they both have is Nether Brick. Nether Brick is a really powerful thing against who they're going to be going against right now, um, because if uh, if a soldier has Nether Brick on them, uh, an attacking soldier that attacks with bare fists will be lit on fire. It's kind of crazy, but yeah, the light blue glass mages are only three of them have clay. The rest of them don't don't have anything, and so they're all attacking with their fists. So they're all going to be lit on fire constantly if they're attacking the two, the two tanks, we'll call them. Anyway, let's, um, let's continue with setting things up here. Just wanted to let you know that. Just to emphasize how badass this warrior is, I wanted to uh, give him his own little little close-up. Notice all the shit that's going on with this guy. Yeah, they are going to be pretty damn difficult to defeat. And I'll give them four personal bodyguards right here. And I'm going to make the other super soldier over there and give them four personal bodyguards. And then we'll begin. Here's the other super unit. This is the healer. You can see that they have, uh, instead of having offense, they got they got their melon to heal units, and they also have an upgraded shield. So they're going to be very tough to defeat too. Also, I want to throw in um, a crown here so that there's more of an organized thing. That's what I did for the first battle with, with the uh, redstone units. Um, gave one of them a crown. So and the crown won't add to their statistics or anything, they'll just be more likely to follow this guy. So yeah, with all that being said, let's uh, let's do it. Alright, I'm going to type in a command here, I'm going to make sure I'm in F1 mode. We're going to do it at night, because that's a good time for an ambush. I'm going to do slash slash replace uh, 20 with 0. There we are, the battle has commenced. So you can see that blue has a has a pretty has a pretty heavy attack 
on uh, on the very offensive unit here. Now, this offensive unit is blinding them. Also, look at that. Oh my god, I didn't even get to see them, but there was a, there was a brick doll already. And I'm pretty sure Grey or the neutral civilization, the Falcords, um, revived them to their side. I want to zoom in here on this super unit. Oh yeah, this is this is the healer, isn't it? Oh, is this the healer? Where's the healer? I want to see what the healer is up to. Looks like, uh, oh, it looks like, uh, the Falcord has a unit just sitting here. Not knowing what to do. These blues are teaming up to take down this one unit. I'm not sure if that's the wisest idea. Blue has fallen. Oh, blue keeps falling. Oh, this is the, this is the healer. The healer is very busy running around, realizes that a unit has lost. Turn around. Turns around. Uh, oh, did you see that? There was a revive there by light blue. Oh, it looks like some units are actually getting stuck behind this pole. You see units are also getting uh, lit on fire if they're attacking the uh, the tanks. Ooh, another unit has died. Will they be revived? Yes, yes, they were revived. But also, this healer is doing a very great job of just keeping the situation contained, keeping the foul cord nourished. Ooh, damn, look at all that death. The leader has died. That's important to note. The leader has died of uh, the light blue last mages. Things are not looking good for blue at all. Ooh. They have picked up a crown. One of them picked up a crown. What? Who picked up? That one picked up a crown. What? The, the super units should be picking up crowns, not you. Peasants. Peasants. And we can see that the um, battle is continuing here. It looks like blue has run out of all things reviving. All things reviving. All things along the lines of reviving. And this is not very good. They are just uh, burning alive in the corner. That's. It's not what we want to be seeing, but. Might as well pick up these guys, because they're not going to be revived anyway. I can't believe they're getting stuck in this tiny, tiny corner. Oh wait, that's a super soldier back there. There's a super soldier... <laughs> I think that's the... That's the healer. Will they be able to take out the healer? The answer is no. They actually picked up the gas tier, so they're going to be able to revive that brick doll if they so choose. Uh, that's another blue down. This actually might be... These might be the last blue survivors. Hmm. I can't believe they've all gotten stuck in this area. Let's let's uh, survey the area. Oh, there was another super soldier. It looks like um, actually most of their stuff broke except for their chest plate. So they still got amazing defense in case one of the blue soldiers happens to get out of there. And it looks like they're still going at it. And yeah, this is a good situation for the medic. The medic just just heals up whenever the this uh, cramped battle gets a little too heated. And, um, yeah, Light Blue has no chance. No chance. So I'm going to tally up uh, all the loss, and we're going to see how many gray units are left. The Also, the disappointing thing is that it's possible that gray... They started out with 10 units, right? They may actually have more units now, because Clay actually has more than one use. And, and uh, if they burned um, Light Blue alive, then they turned into brick dolls, and yeah, the point is there might actually be more than 10 soldiers now protecting this base. So let me count it up. We'll see. So it looks like there's actually 11 troops remaining, and that includes the two super units. So very disappointing, definitely a loss for light blue, but that's just the way the cookie crumbles, I suppose. They'll, they're going to have to come back when they have more offense, I would think. Now, it's possible that when they come back with Revivers plus, um, what is that, Fire Charges, they could win, because they will be burning a lot of soldiers, and they will be... Yeah, they might have a better chance when they can burn the other soldiers alive and then revive them to their own side. But as it stands now, Grey is actually just too powerful. You know, when, when this battle began, I was thinking, okay, this is going to be a pretty easy win for Blue. Not the case. Not the case. So, 11 soldiers are here, and, um, yeah, I guess we're gonna have to move on to the Redstone Assassins. Okay, here we are with Redstone, well, Redstone's turn. Now, what they've been doing is, if we go down into their mine, we can see that they've been kind of doing what they've been doing. They've been getting iron, they've been getting coal, um, they've actually, they've gone down here for some reason, I'm trying to remember why. Oh, right, there's iron down here. So, yeah, they've been, uh, they've been very busy. They 
Um, I believe last episode unlocked access to single shears, so definitely a, a pretty good offensive option. Um, and yeah, they actually sent out some upgraded units uh, to... What's it called? To this ruins. This ruins from uh, from the beginning of the game. And so, um... Oh yeah, and also they've placed down some things. They placed down this stone here so that they don't take uh, fall damage coming in. They also placed down this stone here so they don't take to take fall damage while descending because they I believe they're only attacking with like five units and it would not be very efficient to do that and uh, and lose two of their units on the way down. That's a very large percent. So I have in my notes that there are 18 zombies remaining in this area, so I'm going to set the battle up right here this time. We'll say that they um, they fell down here, and the zombies had actually been in that corner over there, so they met in the center of the room, and we'll see how it goes. So I wanted to say that this is going to be five redstone units that are going to, going to, they're going to be tier two units. That's going to be a wooden button plus a single shear versus 18 zombies. And we'll see how it goes. As usual, I'm going to give one of them a crown as well. And here we go. Redstone begins the onslaught. The zombies are obviously... I think they have about 50% more health than regular units. 50 or 25% more. Uh, I hope this portal's blocked off. I'm pretty sure it is. Now, one of the units is getting singled out here. Luckily, Redstone has returned with a bit more offense. That's a good thing. It looks like the leader is getting stuck here. Oh, looks like one of the units has died already. There's a button lying there. I don't know if zombies can actually use tools or not. The leader has fallen. Oh, no. I think there's only one Redstone unit left. Yeah, there is. Where is he? Where is he? Was oh, that him? Getting stuck on the stairs. Stairs. Worst enemy. A lot of zombies are just kind of uh, cheering their, their friends on. They're not actually doing much. The, the zombie leader is now... What are they doing? I don't really understand. Where is the... Oh, they're falling into this trap. Maybe it's part of Redstone's plan. Speaking of, where the... F where is he? I can't seem to find our Redstone... Fr oh, there! There! He still has a shear. He still has a chance. I don't think any of the zombies have actually died yet. This is definitely an issue. This one's kind of freaking the hell out, isn't he? Yeah. Okay. Come on. Please. Please do something. I might have to, uh, might have to interfere here. No, I think I'm actually gonna have to, uh, do this. That didn't seem to help much. Another block? Alright, alright, come on. Oh, no. Yeah. Kind of what I thought. So, it looks like... No zombies to hide at all. Very shocking to me. Wow, the, the uh, our colored units really aren't having any luck today, are they? Wow, yeah. No... <laughs> wow, for redstone, none of their adversaries died. And for light blue, one of their adversaries... I mean, they actually have one more adversary than they had when they started the battle. This is actually kind of ridiculous, so I think the moral of the story here for, for the zombies is they need to come back with maybe some defense? Maybe more offense? Not sure. Redstone's plan is probably to just offense it up 
and you know they might go for something else because this is obviously kind of a difficult base to take over and it should be because they're gonna have access to this nether portal and a bunch of loot um, but yeah yeah I think we're gonna have to move on to uh, to greens turn I'll see you there and finally, to wrap up the episode, here we are with Green. So Green has just been really peaceful. The other civilizations have been failing at trying to kill and sending sending armies and upgrading these things and just violence, violence, violence. The Green has been here, just peacefully, in the forest. has been, uh, been getting iron, been getting coal. They've just been, you know, having a great time upgrading buildings. Or, I mean, while well, they're working on upgrading buildings. They actually made their first house right there so that's what that is I know it's hard to tell because I don't build very well but uh but yeah that's what that is um and they're also going to as soon as they can upgrade this to get uh more more use out of their turn more resourcefulness um after they upgrade this that will be the final level by the way because they will have upgraded it from level one to level three you can't upgrade past that and, um, yeah, you can see they have a huge supply of stone, and they are the stonemasons, so it does make a lot of sense. After they upgrade their workshop, they are probably going to upgrade this wall, because fortification is a huge priority for them. Also, I like how soldiers are, like, drawn to, uh, to high ground. Like, look at how many are here, then look at how many are here. Let's see here. Well, there's somebody. Wow, amazing. It's like it's like they they just like hanging out hanging out where where it's a uh, where it's tall. Where it's tall. Yeah, that makes sense. What is this? There's these uh there's these easter egg um play soldiers that spawn occasionally. And I don't know what the percent chances, probably about 1%. Um maybe even less. And yeah, but they're always fun and they feature well-known YouTubers. I think white or black or uh, one of those colors has Captain Sparkles. They might have some other... I mean, I know they have some other popular YouTubers. I'm just trying to think of which ones. Um, but yeah, looks like that's going to be all for this episode. I had higher hopes for the civilizations that were attacking other civilizations, but I suppose I should lower lower my hope for the next episodes. But uh, but I don't want to do that. I have, I have faith that the colored civilizations, the, the primary civilizations, can win out over these terrible, trash, uh, neutral civilizations. I have faith. So, we'll see what has to happen in the next episode. But I want to thank you all for watching. So, I'm sure signing off. Please rate, comment, subscribe to become an adventurer today. And I will see you all in the next episode of the Clay Civilizations Project with Seven Adventures Season 2. So, I'm sure signing off.